Hey, what's up YouTube? Down the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to fix your upper dishwasher rack that just falls off. See what's happening right here? So you can see right here, this wheel is just broken off of this little adjuster. You can put it back on and, you know, close it, but every time this is loaded up with dishes, when this gets opened, a lot of times, you know, people will pull it and a little bit of weight and it just, just falls off and comes off the track. The fix is actually to order this whole adjuster kit. Now there are several aftermarket replacements for this adjuster and that's what I ended up picking up. I figured since the uh, original one broke, we might as well try a different version. And it should be a pretty simple fix. This entire adjuster assembly with wheels comes as a kit. You get both sides and that's what we're going to replace. Now this is going to be the same for many different models of dishwasher. The first thing we need to do is remove these little plastic end caps on this rail so that we can re completely remove this upper dishwasher rack. Now I've noticed on a few other videos as I was looking, these plastic end pieces, they, there seem to be a couple different types. Some of them you have to go in with a screwdriver on the inside and push back the little tab. This one is actually right on the end. Part of this little plastic piece with the lines on it and a little lip is what you wanna push in and then that will just slide towards the center and come off. Same with this side here and maybe this Maybe this would be easier with the rack pushed back in. Just push that in and see it, it releases the lip. It just pushes towards the center and slides out. With those clips out of the way, we can pull the rack out completely and go set it on the counter or a workspace. Now you don't need many tools for this job. Depending on the kit that you get, if you get the original one or the replacement uh, or some of the different aftermarket replacements, you'll see that the screws that come in the kit, these are a T15 Torx bit. Some of the ones I noticed are just a standard Phillips screw. I even saw a few people that mentioned that they wanted to replace these screws with a stainless version, and that's fine too, because I'm sure these might rust over time, so that's not a bad idea. Now first to remove the old piece here, just get a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry this, pry this piece here off first. Doesn't take much. Oh, the inside piece comes off at the same time. And then this side piece here, you can see that just, you just push on that and that plastic piece pops off. And then this side is a little different. There's a little plastic tab here. Well, well I guess if you just pry up on that, it'll kind of break off. Or if you get lucky, it'll slide off. As long as you take it off, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. And then this, this piece just kind of snaps out. And then this piece came right off for us. I've noticed on other videos, you have to press these two little tines in to get that to release. I was maybe a little rough with it and it just, just came off for me. So that's done. Okay, to put the new adjuster on, we just need to count four spaces in. So one, two, three, four. And then you just kind of fish this through here and then turn it. And then these pieces, Put them on next. So you see this little rectangle opening or this little rectangle shape? That goes up and out when you're putting these in. And it's pretty easy to do. They just kind of slide in between the tines and then you just line that up and you hear it click. So you know it's on. Same with this other side. See the orientation with the rectangular shape up and facing out. And just line that up and press it down to where that locks in place. And you'll see how that moves up and down. Now we need to put this plastic cap on the inside over here. And you'll notice there's a little slot or a groove or a channel, I guess, in which this metal part needs to slide into. Just line that up and carefully press that down. And those little tabs lock it in place. Now we need to put on the correct actuator arm. So you can see the little, the button that you press or the little tab here, that needs to be facing towards the front of the rack, which is this way. And it needs to be, of course, towards the center of the rack. So we'll just tilt this, tilt this out just a little bit. doesn't take much. And you can put that in. Kind of have to lift it up here too, it looks like. It's almost like a like an axle that this pivots on. So let's just put it in. 
and then bring this back down. These little grooves in the plastic go onto these two vertical tines, and then there's, there's also a little notch for this horizontal tine right here. And that's where that needs to go. Now this other outer plastic cover, it's pretty simple. It has this little tab that slides up underneath here, like so. And then that, that little tab right there has to go beyond that tine, and then it will snap in place. And then we can put in the two screws that hold it in place or hold it together. Now remember you're going into plastic, so don't overdo these. Just make them snug. All right, and then we just wanna make sure that that works. You can see that you push that in and it, it'll go up or down and locks it into place. Let's do the other side. All right, same process. We'll just pry this guy off here first. Take off the outside and inside part. Of course, you can see this is our broken piece here with that wheel missing. And as careful as I guess you want to be here, but we're just taking this piece off here. These are those two plastic tines. You could also just pry that clip in like that. I guess I should say be as careful as you want to be. Some people might just tear this off because it's all pretty brittle if it's kind of old. There's that little plastic clip comes off on the inside. And same with this one, like I mentioned, it just kind of breaks apart if you're not, you don't even have to be rough with it. It just kind of comes across. Just make sure you're not damaging or bending any of those tines. But that's it, we'll just toss this. All right, so same as the other side, just count four spaces in, starting with this one, one, two, three, four, and then just put that in, like so. These pieces, just line them up the right direction. There we go. Now see, that's not all the way in. That has to, that has to go in until it clicks like that. You do need to make sure that it pushes all the way in until it clicks. See, what it is is it's the metal end or ridge hitting the top of this, but you need it to go all the way beyond like that until it clicks. You can verify it by just kind of pulling upwards on it. Again, got to slide this in to that channel on the back. There we go. Kind of had to lean this in while tilting this back. And that seemed to start it. There we go. That's in place. And then our little actuator facing the, the, uh, the front part of the rack and of course facing in. And we'll just slide this in. I thought this would be tricky, but it's really only one, one way that it can go. As long as you get the ends uh, slid in to those little cutouts in the plastic, you should be fine. And then line up these two vertical tines here, just underneath this horizontal tine and then this horizontal tine right there. And then the outside cap or plastic piece here, just kind of seat it up underneath, push it in. This little plastic tab, it just has to get past that little horizontal tine there. Screw these in with a T15. Just making that snug, don't overdo it. There we go. When we go to put this back in, you wanna make sure that these are either all the way up or all the way down. And we'll just make sure this one is also all the way up. So these, these are now ready to, to slide back into those tracks. You can see this little, this little part that is the, uh, the manifold basically in the back that goes onto that. There's a little standpipe or a little tube that comes this direction. It only works if you're in the fully up or fully down position. Otherwise that won't seat. So we just line up these little rollers on both sides and slide in the rack. Okay, and then just need to pull these rails back out so we can put those caps back in. And here's our, our new little clip. This is kind of the stop or stopper for the end of the track here. Let's see if these ones work. 
these didn't work I was gonna use the reuse the old ones if anything I probably have a little it's kind of dirty in here still with a lot of that mineral deposits and buildup but looks like these will work there it goes okay the new one did work let's go do the other side all right that's on again that probably would have been a little bit smoother had i cleaned this off but they work wheels are working great and the adjuster works all right looks good i've got it adjusted all the way up and just verify that it slides back and goes into the manifold in the back and should be good to go and you're done i hope you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind that does help me out I'll get a link in the description to the part that I use along with some of the tools as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.